Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Ellison for Catholic News Break. Here's what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. On April 12th, almost a month into his pontificate, Pope Francis created a group of eight cardinals from around the world to advise him on church governance. Among the eight chosen were Cardinal Sean O'Malley of Boston, Cardinal Reinhard Marx from Germany, Cardinal George Pell from Australia, and Cardinal Oscar Andreas Rodriguez Maradiega from Honduras. CNS Rome Bureau Chief Francis Rocca discusses the appointments and what they mean for the future of the church. The archives of the Catholic News Service Bureau in Rome, there's a thick file folder labeled Curial Reform, full of notes and clippings that date back to the 1950s, which gives you some idea of the long and often frustrating history behind Pope Francis's current efforts to make the Vatican bureaucracy more effective and responsible. In some ways, the Pope's naming of an international panel of cardinals to advise him on uh, reforming governance of the church is nothing new. Uh, Popes Paul VI and John Paul II both tapped groups of cardinals for that purpose. And for more than 30 years, uh, a permanent council of cardinals from dioceses on five continents has provided a degree of outside oversight over Vatican management and finances. What's striking about the group of men Pope Francis has picked is on the one hand, the high numbers of uh, English and Spanish speakers and of people from the Americas, which reflect the demographic reality of the church today. Probably even more significant is the speed with which Francis is acting. John Paul took 10 years after his election to reorganize the Vatican bureaucracy. And even at the time, many concluded that he hadn't gone far enough. Francis announced his effort one month after his election, and given that he's 18 years older than John Paul was when he took office, it seems likely the change will come a lot more quickly this time around. Looking at news from around the country, the Episcopal ordination took place recently for Bishop Robert Coyle, who is now newly ordained for the Archdiocese for the Military Services. The new auxiliary bishop, in his remarks at the Mass, spoke of his great affection for both Pope Benedict and his predecessor, Blessed John Paul II. He also referred to one of the head of the Archdiocese, Archbishop Timothy Broglio's predecessors, the late Cardinal John O'Connor of New York, as one of his heroes. In their respective military chaplaincies, both had served on Okinawa and both had served in the Third Marines as well. Bishop Coyle added that he once got a letter from the late Cardinal recommending that the priests stay close to Jesus, who will never fail. In news from around the world, recently the Shroud of Turin was exhibited on Holy Saturday in celebration of the year in the new evangelization. Barry Schwartz, the documenting photographer, the 1978 scientific investigation of the Shroud, talks about the experience, the relic, and his faith. I think most people wonder what we felt when we were there to examine the shroud. And uh, under the circumstances, because we were there to do science, we had to suspend some of our, more of our personal feelings and sort of set them aside because we had a very ambitious se series of tasks to perform in a very short period of time. I don't think it was lost on anyone that we were doing something of historic nature. Once our evidence was collected and our data reduced and our papers published, um, I eventually came to a point, and it took many years, but I eventually came to a point where I had to apply uh, what Sir Arthur Conan Doyle said out of the lips of Sherlock Holmes, that if you eliminate all the possibilities, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, is most likely the truth. And without a doubt, I was absolutely forced into accepting, because there was no other possible explanation, this has to be what it appears to be. People often ask me, does this prove the resurrection? Or is this evidence of the resurrection? Now, that's a real problem for somebody from the scientific background, because resurrection isn't something we can go into a laboratory and test. We can't go into a lab and decide, uh, resurrect people to see what kind of images we can make. So resurrection becomes more a test of faith than science. But I always point out the shroud did not come with a book of instructions. So the answer to faith isn't going to be on that piece of cloth. 
but more likely in the eyes and the hearts of those who look upon it. And finally in the news, one of the saints who will be canonized by Pope Francis coming up in May is Blessed Maria Guadalupe Garcia Zavala, better known in Guadalajara, Mexico as Madre Lupita. Blessed Maria Guadalupe left a legacy of providing care for the poor and the elderly through the handmaids of St. Margaret Mary and the poor. The order she co-founded with Father Cipriano Negues in 1901 at the age of 23. She will become the second Mexican woman to be canonized and the latest from the western state of Jalisco, where the Cristero Rebellion raged in the 1920s and re religious like Madre Lupita were forced to carry out their work as laity because of anti-clerical restrictions that forbade her wearing the habit. Santa Margarita Hospital in Guadalajara was founded by Madre Lupita. There are many stories from hospital patients who say the soon-to-be saint still walks the halls, providing care, attention, and miracles to those in need. The canonization will be held on May 12th. Well, that is all the information we have for you this time. Please stay with Catholic TV for more Catholic news. Until then, I'm Kevin Nelson, and I'll see you next time on Catholic News Break.